Hello everyone. Good evening. Uh, good morning. Good morning to the ones who are seeing the sun. Good evening to the ones who are seeing the moon now. So I have uh, Preeti and Chandra uh, joining me uh, today on our today's uh, SecPod webcast uh, episode. So I'm Jaxir, your host uh, through SecPod webcast. We bring you the latest happenings at SecPod and exciting stuff. Uh, we are working on to prevent cyber attacks for enterprise IT security teams globally. Uh, we keep doing that. Uh, and today's session is a special session. Our R&D Labs uh, has another big announcement to make. And uh, uh, they, they really are getting me tired because uh, these announcements are becoming too frequent, right, for good. Uh, and this, this, this time, it's a new product launch. I, I and I'm, I I just keep thinking when was the last time I did a product launch webinar uh, with Chandra and Preeti and I think it was not not uh, too long ago it was just one month ago so uh, welcome Preeti Chandra um, can you share your secret uh, what's going on uh, how how are you able to come up with so many updates uh, so quickly uh, and uh, what is this what I I see. I do see we have uh, something interesting to share today, uh, though what I don't see is what exactly it is, and maybe you can shed some light there. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Chandra here. Good morning and good evening to all of you. Yes, so we certainly have some very exciting product that we want to launch today. Excited to be part of this, uh, this session. Preeti, so so since since this is this is your show today, right, Preeti? So you're representing uh, this new product. We wanted to understand uh, this. I think not so. Uh, as I said, it was just last month we we released on, uh, one product, right? And this is yeah. another update. So how how I mean how how is your team? Uh, I mean, I'm sure they're pumped up. Uh, about uh, <laughs> making so many updates to the platform, right? Yeah. Uh, what's your experience? Uh, how uh, would you like to share uh, a little bit about how your journey has been uh, for these couple of uh, months, right? While you, you and your team were working on this uh, amazing stuff. Yeah, we had CPAM, uh, then uh, we had the unified dashboard, CHS, and now we have RP. Um, there's always a lot of things to do because there are more and more devices which are connecting uh, to the network and we have to safeguard them. So yeah, there's a lot to do always. Oh, great, great. <laughs> I mean, I already see this is a game changer for vulnerability management. Yeah. That's what it says, right? And uh, I'm sure, I mean, you have a fantastic uh, uh, um, introduction to the product that uh, that everybody would definitely enjoy. I like to also remind everybody that uh, before we jump into today's session, uh, that a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our website and also on our YouTube channels. Uh, we will also send a recording to your email, uh, whoever has registered uh, for the session. And uh, so you can watch it later uh, as well and uh, share with others in your team. Uh, towards the end of the session, we're going to have a Q&A session, uh, and we'd love to hear what, uh, your questions about uh, and ideas about uh, risk-based vulnerability prioritization. Uh, that's our topic for today. And uh, Chandra and Priti uh, would really love to answer those questions uh, on this session. You can also post your questions uh, below your Bright Talk player, uh, and we'll make sure we address all of those questions to the end of the uh, session. For those of you just joining, uh, welcome. Uh, and uh, today we are going to talk about a few topics, few important topics. So again, once again, I have Chandra, uh, Chandra Shekhar Baswano, who is the CEO of SecPod, and then Priti Subramanian, uh, Director and Chief of Research and Development at SecPod, and myself, Jaxi, your host today. Uh, so we're going to talk about a couple of things, uh, right? We're going to talk about EVM framework, uh, advanced vulnerability management framework, which is the flagship 
technology uh, framework that SecPod uh, has pioneered for over a decade and uh, keeps continuously building it for enterprises uh, globally. Then we're going to talk about uh, what vulnerabilities are important and uh, which vulnerability is really, really important, right? How do you decide? We're going to talk about uh, prioritization. Uh, uh, what role does uh, prioritization has uh, in uh, uh, AVM framework? And then we're going to talk about Sena now risk prioritization uh, as, uh, as a product. And then towards the end, we're going to have a Q&A session. So without any further delay, uh, Chandra, I'll hand over to you, invite you to address the audience and uh, uh, share with us how, how have you been seeing the success of the AVM framework uh, for customers? And if you could share uh, a couple of snippets or uh, excerpts uh, that you keep hearing from customers. Sure, thank you, Jaxir. Before I go there, uh, as someone heading marketing for SecPod, how are you managing so many product launches? <laughs> as I said already, um, I mean, I, I, I was, uh, I can't uh, um, uh, contain myself, right, with the excitement uh, of so many, I mean, and it, in fact, I mean, if you ask any mar marketer or a salesperson, uh, and, and they crave, uh, right, uh, I keep hearing from uh, other peers in the industry, they crave uh, continuous update in the technology, right? So that's something that I'm really, uh, uh, that I can really boast to all my peers uh, who are in the marketing and sales uh, functions, right? That yes, uh, we have every now and then, uh, as sales has a quarterly approach, I think uh, we, we, we don't even have a quarterly approach. The product has a daily approach here, right? So that's, that's how the product is uh, organized at SecPod. So as a marketer, I think there's a lot a uh, lot of excitement uh, and pride in uh, going out to customers and showing, yes, we can solve uh, more problems for them. Good, happy to hear. So definitely at, at SecPod, we've adopted accelerated innovation. Uh, so we're going to be talking about uh, one of that today. Uh, let me kind of set the background for this particular product launch and then hand it over to Preeti. So that's the part that I'm going to be playing today. So this is the funnel that we have, uh, sort of a reverse funnel that we have talked about uh, extensively in uh, previous webinars as well. So prevention, detection, and response, and recovery, which is the NIST CSF representation basically. And uh, so we have clubbed identify and protect into prevention. So at SecPod, everything that we do is around prevention. Uh, so whether it is uh, overall, if you, if you look at it, it is uh, uh, effective attack surface management um, or risk and compliance is the area that we have been operating at. So obviously, uh, the, the way we have depicted, the more attention you pay to the prevention layer, the less you will have to deal with at the detection and response layer. So that's the, the fundamental sort of a belief that we have at SecPod. And uh, we've blown the prevention into these layers, identify, assess, prioritize, remediate, et cetera. So all of these coming together in, 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 a, in the form of a, a wheel sort of a representation to indicate that it is a continuous loop and this needs to happen uh, in a tightly integrated uh, sort of fashion. So with that principle, we devised an advanced vulnerability management framework. It starts at uh, visualize where you get complete visibility into the IT infrastructure on a continuous basis. And then you normalize the infrastructure, extremely important step because there can be number of posture specific anomalies or certain deviations that could be present within the environment that can easily be dealt with. So that is where standardizing and normalization of the IT infrastructure uh, is extremely critical because number of uh, attacks or attackers are targeting some of these anomalies that are present in the environment. Post that, we detect and assess. This is, again, a continuous detection where you're 
performing assessment against the IT infrastructure to identify vulnerabilities of different kinds, not just the software vulnerability, but also misconfigurations and other security risk exposures that might be present in the environment, which is sort of redefining what vulnerability really stands for. Uh, while most people pay attention to just the software vulnerability, uh, invariably we see attacks targeting different kinds of vulnerability. For an attacker, it, vulnerability is a weakness that is available for them to exploit, and the weakness can be of any sort. It can be a misconfiguration, or could be uh, some sort of a security control that is not configured properly or not functioning properly, etc. And then that information is fed into remediation. So the remediation uh, already knows what vulnerabilities it has to act upon, whether software vulnerability, go ahead and update through security patches, fix misconfigurations or apply security controls that go beyond patching and then report this. So this is the framework that we kind of represented and built with our SENA now as a platform, uh, sort of an approach with multiple tools um, uh, implementing these functions and natively integrated uh, into one, one into the other, and making this into a continuous process. So this is something extremely valuable to our customers when they look at our products today. We have six products coming together on one single console, one interface with a unified representation of this entire uh, uh, outline that we have depicted here within the product. So we have kind of translated this entire thing exactly in its uh, nature into our uh, SENA now as a platform. And our customers obviously love it because they get visibility into the item infrastructure. They can detect vulnerabilities of different kind, mitigate those vulnerabilities also within the same platform and make this into a continuous process. So there is one missing piece uh, that we kind of identified here. And uh, so that is the, the, the part that we have addressed uh, today with our new product launch that we have, uh, uh, we, we are here to talk about today. So what is that missing patch? So the gap is, we detect millions of vulnerabilities. So typically we see as part of this particular layer, any new customers that we onboard, invariably we end up seeing millions of vulnerabilities that are discovered, software vulnerabilities, misconfiguration, posture anomalies, thousands of patches that needs to be uh, deployed, et cetera. So the problem there is that uh, we said you go ahead and fix all of them because you have an integrated uh, mitigation solution. So if you have a software vulnerability, go ahead and fix it. If you have misconfiguration, go ahead and fix it. So we provided the fixes for almost everything that we discovered. But the problem was, if you have a million vulnerability, where do you really start your journey of uh, mitigation? So which is that vulnerability that is most important that you must uh, act upon now? Are there certain vulnerabilities that are being exploited in the wild or there's zero day vulnerability or there are vulnerabilities that are not so important uh, to un or not really exploitable in my environment is this a critical system uh, if this is on a critical system is it really exploitable so there are so many questions that our customers uh, had and, and we kind of realized that and uh, so to address this particular need, uh, we introduced a new layer called prioritize. So what the change would be, so you detect vulnerabilities of all kind and you feed that vulnerability discovery into the prioritization engine. The prioritization, the, the purpose there is to help streamline the remediation activity. So how, how will that uh, help? So you have millions of vulnerability, the prioritization engine will uh, streamline that into or categorize them into certain uh, types or, or puts that into certain buckets where this is something that you need to act upon now. This is something that you need to act upon uh, slightly ahead of your remediation cycle, et cetera, et cetera. So when we do that, so this entire process kind of gets streamlined. So the, the customers really know 
this is where I need to act upon because this is uh, a vulnerability that is exploited in the wild, uh, very applicable to my environment, and maybe it is on a mission critical sort of a device. So how do I go ahead and fix it now? So with the remediation engine, uh, you can go ahead and roll out those first uh, as against some vulnerabilities that are of low criticality or even if they are high critical vulnerability, maybe not really exploitable in my environment. So that kind of helps streamline the mitigation process. So this is what we are uh, here to talk about today. Uh, with the introduction of Prioritize, we are launching a new product called SENA Now Risk Prioritization. Over to Preeti now to talk about that. Thank you, Chandra, for this wonderful introduction. Um, risk prioritization, as such, in the industry is not a new thing. Um, people have uh, several approaches, uh, different perspectives. Right, and um, in actuality, when we look at vulnerabilities, um, sometimes people just look at the CVSS score and prioritize. Um, some people would look at um, how uh, I can minimize patching and have maximize effect for my auditing. Um, some people would look at um, vulnerabilities which impact maximum number of devices, how is it aging and things like that. So there are different approaches. Uh, if there is um, you know, a malware attack which is out there in wildlife, might as well go and fix it. So different perspectives, different approaches. Um, all that is possible with uh, SEDA. But what we brought into this is um, something that we uh, were thinking about. Um, how is the business context of that device, right? How important is that device for the organization? Is there something in the device which is very unique than the other devices? So vulnerabilities will not be looked um, as same, though the vulnerability is same in both the devices, they have a different impact, a different business context. We already have, um, you know, from a long time, a very big uh, homegrown intelligence that we have developed. So that is also getting in into this. And we also have a machine le learning algorithm that we have developed. So all these things coming together was our thought initially when we wanted to develop risk prioritization. And in that process, uh, we stumbled upon uh, SSVC. Um, that is the stakeholder specific vulnerability categorization. It was bang on because this is what is something that we were thinking and um, it just uh, came, um, you know, as something that just um, uh, is the way that we were thinking risk prioritization should be. So uh, vulnerability intelligence that we already have with the business context and our automated classification using machine learning. What is the chain effect of several vulnerabilities in a device? Uh, is there a ripple effect? Is there chaining? We also mapped uh, MITRE attack framework um, techniques, tactics, mitigation into it. We try to understand organization network posture from the customers, seeing the technical impact of uh, vulnerabilities. Is there information disclosure? Uh, are we uh, you know, compromising the credentials? And all this coming in together built our risk prioritization analyzer. And what is this? stakeholder specific vulnerability categorization is, it gives us four decision points. The first one, uh, starting from the right, is ACT. This is something um, uh, which would make sense when you have a very large number of vulnerabilities in your organization and you've used all sort of statistics to come up with an action plan, but still, you know, you have a large, large number still to fix. So um, <clears throat> what ACT does is it gives you those vulnerabilities on those devices, which you have to immediately act upon, right? Uh, there could be uh, several factors that are affecting that decision that I'll come to it. Then we 
come across a decision point called attend, which means that if you have a remediation cycle, say uh, you are patching, some people patch weekly uh, on weekends. So try to attend to it a little earlier than that because uh, there are some characteristics which need that attention. Uh, then comes track star. This is another decision point where you can track it. There is no action that you will be taking immediately, but there are certain characteristics of that vulnerability that needs a closer look at, but you can update them in the standard update line. And track is something that you need to just track it over your uh, next remediation cycle and then go about remediating with your standard update lines. So these four possible decisions can be taken with four factors. The first one being exploitation. So um, there are multiple sources um, that can tell us how the vulnerability um, characteristics are. One is, of course, uh, from the NVD. We also look into various other factors, such as um, you know Google Project Zero. If it is CSERS, CSERS KVs, uh, we have our ingrown um, MVE feed. So all this getting in together, uh, and also the critical vendors and crucial findings that we have made. It is a remote code execution vulnerability that feeds it uh, into the uh, le machine learning algorithm that we have developed and gives a new score to every vulnerability or misconfiguration that we have identified in a device. So all those characteristics, references, um, when it was published, is, is there any change? Is there a common weakness that is um, misused? And uh, we also do a chi-square method to find a vulnerability relationship with vendors. Right, So we try to find out what are those critical vendors. Uh, we also train the existing data over so many years that we have collected uh, using our machine learning alg algorithm with XGBoost gradient. And then whenever a new CVE comes in, we try to give a score to it. So it is computed from 0 to 1. And then we multiply it by a factor of 10 to make it from 0 to 10. Now. Uh, if a public exploit is available, we try to mark it between four to seven. And if an MB is present or it's a CISA KV, we try to give it a higher score. And once we have exploitation um, uh, score, we try to range it into high, medium, and low. That is the first decision factor uh, that would affect our initial four act, attend, track, star, and track. The next thing that we try to check is, can the attacker reliably reliably automate their attack? Um, so there are seven steps in a kill chain. Uh, we try to see if the first four steps um, uh, you know, are automatable, then we mark it as automatable. So the first thing is, is the machine um, you know, uh, publicly accessible uh, or enumerable on the network? Uh, the second thing that we try to see is uh, there is a, a second step called weaponization. So the CV is already there in the device. Uh, the, it might look that it is a low grade CVE. Uh, we can you know, patch it a little later, but there could be other CVEs uh, or misconfiguration which can act as a chain for an attacker to get into your system. So they might make use of one vulnerability to get in and uh, then misuse the vulnerability that we are closely looking at. So uh, this shading effect um, is um, you know, generally in sophisticated attacks. Uh, we see a lot of this um, happening. And the next factor we see is delivery, which means if no user interaction is needed, this is an attribute of CVE uh, that we consider. If there is no interaction needed, that means that it is pretty easy for a user to just get into the system and uh, you know, take actions. And the most important thing uh, of automatable is to check if the user has any mitigation in place, any, any um, you know, uh, say, for example, ASLR is enabled or a bit locker is enabled. So we have um, 70 checks, nearly 70 checks that we apply. And we try to check if there is anything that can frustrate the attacker 
from attacking the system. So this makes it a very differential factor where, uh, say, we have two machines, right? Same CVE, but there is some mitigation in place, a workaround in place, which will frustrate the attacker, which would try to give it you know, a different decision for that device. Then comes technical impact. It's pretty much similar to um, uh, the CVSS scoring mechanism. We just try to check here that if there is any information disclosure that is going to happen or people are losing their credentials, there are credential bypassing techniques that are used. Uh, and it comes into two things. Uh, is it a total impact or a partial impact? For that, we try to check the confidentiality, integrity, availability, if all of them are high, if there are any uh, rogue CWAs that are used. Um, uh, then there are keyword searches that we do. And also we try to see the technicality of the attack. And we mark that particular risk as total or partial. Coming to the last factor that determines um, our decisions is mission prevalence. Um, generally, uh, there are devices in the organization. Some might be very essential uh, for accomplishing that organization's mission. So it, it could affect more than two factors, right? Uh, where uh, it is uh, affecting the MEFs of the organization. And there could be some which are having a very minimal impact on the organization and sub, uh, some machines support the business um, mission. So we try to segregate our devices into three uh, factors, essential, minimal, and support. And eventually, when we have come into understanding that each of them have a value now, SSVC decision tree looks something like this. So for exploitation, uh, we consider high, medium, low, though SSVC says non-POC actor. Then we come under automatable, which uh, graph node are you going to check? So it's going to be yes, okay. Technical impact is total, okay. And the mission well-being, the mission prevalence is high. Then we get into something called att attend. Right, so this complete uh, table of how we make decisions, uh, we have uh, considered uh, with different values of each of these exploitation, automatable, technical impact, and mission prevalence to come to a decision on each device, each risk. Is it a track, attend, act, or um, track stuff? So our overall architecture. Uh, takes all the vulnerability data that we have collected on, from different devices, right? We have a lot of devices, so we have collected all that information. We also apply uh, environmental context to it by running those nearly 70 checks that we have implemented to get into our algorithm, our analysis, where we check the MITRE attack mapping, we see the mitigations that are in place, uh, in a device, if it is there, then it is very difficult for users to attack. The vulnerability intelligence, this is not just the publicly known vulnerability. If the vulnerability is not published, we also have something called SecPod vulnerability enumeration. So we make use of that. And we also have high fidelity attacks, the malware vulnerability enumeration. We map all the vulnerabilities and misconfiguration to uh, a malware, which is out there uh, exploited and wild. We have an improved EPSS um, analysis uh, that we do. Uh, this is a machine learning algorithm where we take a lot of other factors um, and we use XGBoost gradient here. And all that feeds in, into the SSVC framework decision tree to understand which risks have to be acted upon immediately, attended, track star or track. And the most important thing is that there is a remediation engine, right? So we have told you act upon it, but then what is that patch that we have to apply is also integrated into the risk prioritization, which makes it very easy for our customers to patch their systems. So overall, um, this is what is risk prioritization in a very short um, you know, a talk that I had given. Um, 
it basically has also been integrated into our unified dashboard where you can take actions directly from the dashboard and reach in. I will show you a demo of the product right now, as I promised last time. I'll share my screen. Just let me know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Uh, it's coming up. I, yes. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Jexi. So um, when we um, use our product um, for each account, for prioritization, we have risk prioritization. When you click on it, say uh, in this account, there are uh, 7,861 vulnerabilities and 708 missing configurations. And I ask you to patch it. Uh, where would you start, right? So it starts from these 92, immediately, you know, act upon these 92. Then you can go about, you know, uh, going into the next few uh, categorizations that we have done, you can next take attend. So by clicking on act, you'll be able to see all the um, risks, which are categorized into vulnerabilities and misconfiguration. And you can act upon them by clicking them and remediate. It's as easy as that. So that is the first part of our dashboard. So since we are saying there are 92 act and 760 attend here, this gives the entire list of risks um, on which asset, uh, what are the um, priorities here. Uh, all of them are right now sorted by the most uh, important ones act on the top. So what are those four factors that I spoke about and what are their conditions here? It is automatable, exploitation is high, mission critical, yes. And it has a partial technical impact. So the decision tree takes you to act. And we help you visualize that. And if you want to understand how did we reach to this decision, you can click on no more to understand how this particular risk has been analyzed. So it comes up with a decision tree on the top that you, I had just now shown you. What is this risk, right? And what are those four factors that made it come into act? What are the devices that it is being affected, right? So these are the, this is a demo win server account. There is an information disclosure, uh, you know, found in this particular risk and its confidentiality is high. Automatable, it is yes, because there is a possibility of chaining and it is uh, renumerable on the network. And the exploitation machine learning algorithm has found that it is on a, a, a crucial finding of uh, a malware associated with it, a critical vendor, Fedora. And this is our predicted risk while its risk score, CVSS score was 5.6, right? So this is where we make that difference. Going back to the dashboard, the four factors that um, affect this decision of act is shown here. We can dig deep into it or just look at high, right? Everything is clickable on the dashboard. These are the factors that affected the exploitation analysis. So our prediction score, what is the actual CBSS score, the categories that we have um, put for each of the risk, they fall into these categories. The priority is at 10. It has 15 references over the internet and different sources. Exploitation is high. The critical vendor is Mozilla. Crucial finding, there's an information disclosure. And when was the published and modified date of it? And what is the fix? So once you select this, you can actually go ahead and remediate. So that takes you to remediating Mozilla uh, and only on those devices where it is supposed to be attended to. So that's where our differential factor is. Then comes the factor of automatable. Yes, it is. it can be automated by the attacker. So I told you about the seven steps of kill chain. We check four of them. So I would try to dig deep and try to understand why uh, we have marked it as yes. This is because 
it is enumerable on network there is possibility of chaining there are 658 vulnerabilities with which we can you know there's possibility of attack um so there is no prevention enabled exploit prevention any workaround is not available on this machine and it has um, user interaction faults and um, that's why it is pretty much uh, automatable here then comes the technical impact uh, we have marked 55.4% as partial and total we have 44.6 so I would try to understand which are those technical impact total risks right here. So this is my analysis. Uh, so it says availability, integrity, confidentiality high. That's why we have marked it as total. Going further, there are risks on essential devices. So these uh, devices, I have marked it as essential in um, a configure button that is there on the top. So there are devices that I can mark it as essential. By default, we take all the devices as essential because we want to maximize the patching. But this is a good way to start, you know, uh, prioritizing. So first we configure all the things as a one-time configuration. And as in when devices get added, you can mark them as essential. If you have marked them as essential, you can even mark a tab that it is business centric or a data centric uh, device, mark it and save it. And automatically on the dashboard, you will see that we have identified you know, risk prioritization on essential devices. You can click on it and dig deep into those devices and understand which assets you know, are affected on those devices. What are those risks? Clicking on the CVE will give more information um, on the uh, you know, metrics that NVD has provided. So this is the way we categorize mission prevalence uh, devices. You can click on them and take actions. These are the tabs that you have provided. You can click on them and also go forward and take actions. These are the risks that are there on the um, uh, devices which are public facing, internet facing. Imagine a scenario tomorrow, somebody is going out of office uh, for um, you know, a work, um, uh, say a conference or something like that. You want to patch that device immediately. You can even patch devices based on device, uh, you know, the particular device. So if this demo win server account is important to me, I would want to patch it. So all the act on it, you can just click on it and just select all and patch, right? That is the way. It is a very simple product. Um, imagine doing all this work manually would take a lot of time. Another important aspect of um, risk prioritization is there are some assets, software assets that are important to you. Probably they're running on your production servers. Uh, they need to be constantly looked at so you just mark them as critical and we apply that filter. And whenever there is an issue, say for example, here I feel that my Google Chrome should be always patched and I don't see any act, but I need to attend to three. And we have uh, Apache Log4j where there is an act. So I would want to immediately add upon it. And on Teams, I have found that there is only a track star uh, that we have and we can just click on it and look at it. If you want to patch it, we can go ahead and patch them with a single click. So um, there is an important factor uh, when we come to making decisions. Uh, we also have um, a questionnaire, something that is not software verifiable, right? Say, for example, um, I want to check, you know, uh, is regular training happening for your uh, users, your employees, right? To understand the effect of, um, you know, uh, say sphere phishing, social engineering. Uh, these are some trainings that you might be conducting. If you have marked it as yes, we give that benefit and take that into consideration during decision-making. So these are some set of questions that are mapped to the MITRE ATT&CK uh, framework. And this requires you to answer a few questions. And 
when we go into mitre attack mapping on the top we can see tactics uh, that are there they directly go to that website where you can understand what is this tactic and what is the mitigation that is in place right so you can go ahead and read that on the mitre attack so i think i have covered pretty much everything that we do um yeah i think i have done it uh, but feel free uh, to ask questions uh, if you have any and we'll be able to help you with um, understanding more about the product so now that we have seen uh, risk prioritization uh, as a product um, what i want to explain here is imagine you have so many vulnerabilities right as i've shown in the um, slide here and i say that you just have to immediately act upon 725 it generally gives a boost to all our it engineers security engineers to get that head start where should i start from right and just patch these act vulnerabilities first and then go about patching um, you know you can get, get a sort of a plan in place yeah over to you chandra thank you priti amazing demo and really really powerful product so as a viewer from an external perspective is looking at the product and i think it really makes an impact for um, value to the users who will be using it so this slide kind of summarizes so if you have uh, 340k of vulnerabilities and uh, it says that 725 of them is something that you need to act upon now so that kind of summarizes the the impact that this particular product is going to bring to our customers so we not only prioritize vulnerabilities but we also help prioritize misconfiguration so when i say mis uh, of course these are also vulnerabilities above this the software vulnerabilities these are configuration specific issues and we see some team member of uh, attacks exploiting these misconfigurations too um, unhardened device is definitely sort of an heaven for attackers to exploit so 52000 misconfiguration gets translated to some hundreds of uh, misconfigurations that you must act upon immediately so that doesn't mean to say that you can ignore the other vulnerabilities that are in the attend track store and track it's just that it is helping us streamline my remediation effort so act right now act ahead of your patching cycle or act as per your remediation cycle and the last one is observe um before you uh, have to essentially act upon those so that's a powerful way of streamlining the remediation effort so good so summary in terms of the benefits that uh, uh, our customers get because we have uh, used ssvc uh, framework devised by cisa that came in handy at the right time as uh, priti mentioned so we've used that as a reference framework but we have applied a lot of intelligence fed in a uh, lot of external data points also validated number of uh, uh, mitigations that are probably already enabled within the environment so all of these uh intelligence that is applied on top of ssvc uh, is is kind of giving that clarity to the customers saying these are the uh, remediation processes that you must apply so it, from the vulnerability scanning from the detection point of view we are identifying all kinds of vulnerability so we give that visibility to all of them and then with the remediation sorry the prioritization coming in between brings that clarity into the security risks and how do i go about reducing my exploitable attack surface so a lot of input beyond uh, the 
plain vulnerability data, as I mentioned. So whether it is vulnerability and threat intelligence in the form of MVE, vulnerabilities that are not really publicly uh, documented anywhere, uh, attack kill chain validation, exploitation uh, validation, mitigation techniques coming in. So all of this is making it into a very powerful risk-based vulnerability management uh, platform to, to kind of streamline the remediation into uh, certain steps that one could go ahead and take. So from visibility to detection to prioritization and remediation kind of completes the whole cycle that our customers were really looking for. Yes, over to you, Jaxir. Great, amazing. I think, uh, uh, I mean, I, I can't uh, uh, ignore all the questions that we have in the uh, in the question chat, right? Chat box, but before we approach there, we have a small video and let me try bringing it up uh, for the audience here. Um, only thing is I'll need uh, Chandra and uh, Preeti, your help to confirm if you can hear the audio. Sure. You can see my screen now, right? Yes. Yes. OK. Not every vulnerability is critical. This is what you usually hear. You heard it right. CVSS-based risk prioritization hasn't worked. And modern cyber attacks can hit you from anywhere. Organizations face a growing challenge of managing vulnerabilities that could expose their critical assets to cyber threats. With millions of security vulnerabilities, how do you remediate every vulnerability if every exposure is important? Where do you start your mitigation journey? The stakeholder-specific vulnerability categorization framework devised by CISA helps to prioritize an organization's security vulnerabilities effectively. It combines vulnerability criticality, exploitability, automatability, potential business impact, and asset criticality to classify vulnerabilities into ACT, vulnerabilities that need an instant remediation response with immediate attention. Attend, vulnerabilities that need a quick remediation response faster than standard patch timelines. Track star, vulnerabilities that are closely monitored with standard patch timelines. Track, vulnerabilities that require regular monitoring. So, how do you do it? SecPod's Senior Now Risk Prioritization is the world's first risk-based vulnerability management solution that is based on the CISA SSVC model. Saner Now Risk Prioritization, powered by in-house vulnerability and threat intelligence, implements an enhanced exploit prediction scoring system, or EPSS, and SecPod's unique risk categorization algorithm and proprietary mitigation evaluation techniques in the attack kill chain. It provides real-time insights into your organization's vulnerability landscape to understand the risks and helps you prioritize remediation actions effectively. But it doesn't just stop there. Saner Now Risk Prioritization simplifies and speeds up vulnerability mitigation with natively integrated remediation measures. You can fix all the issues within the same platform. Saner Now integrates risk assessment to accurately detect security risks, risk prioritization to streamline remediation, patch management combat critical vulnerabilities immediately. Compliance to effectively adhere to security standards. With Saner Now Risk Prioritization, you're not just fixing vulnerabilities, you're fortifying your defenses strategically, reducing the attack surface, and safeguarding your organization's digital assets.
Great. Oh, that's amazing work and thanks to the team summing, at, summing it up uh, really well. And congrats to both uh, Preeti and Chandra uh, for such an amazing, uh, I, I wouldn't call it a product. It's uh, literally, I think, a very good, useful, good and useful invention for the customers. They've been waiting for this long time. I remember so many conversations where uh, customers uh, really wanted it and uh, I think speaks uh, highly of the quality of SecPod's uh, uh, R&D efforts to deliver the promise that we make to customers. So before we jump into uh, the Q&A uh, section, I, I wanted to also ask uh, Chandra again, uh, now that you have seen the product demo, uh, you have seen how it works as a product, uh, since you own the product, right? But as a product manager, uh, can you share a little bit about how do you feel going to the pro uh, customers uh, uh, with this uh, new addition to the platform? Yeah, pretty very, very excited. Uh, the the speed with which our R and D group is uh, innovating, uh, you know, as a product manager, uh, so you always have that responsibility of taking that into the product and do your best to communicate the value to the customer. So it is definitely keeping me on my toes for sure. But really, really exciting because uh, we have taken a journey of uh, reinventing vulnerability management, as we call it. So definitely vulnerability management is broken or was broken. And uh, that needs significant uh, advancement that we can really bring onto the table to really help our customers vulnerability management journey, make it into a continuous, seamless and automated routine. That is the mission that we are after. So essentially to prevent cyber attacks, uh, if you look at the IT infrastructure, a lot of things are happening, different kinds of uh, uh, infrastructure uh, innovations are coming in. So obviously you will have a lot of security controls that you'll put in upfront, but vulnerability management becomes the next immediate uh, priority where you are constantly learning the infrastructure, uh, assessing the infrastructure, helping mitigate those exploitable vulnerabilities that are out there, which attackers could easily take them on. So that is the journey that we are after. So if we uh, do it really right, significant number of cyber attacks can be eliminated. So that's our belief. And with that, uh, I think, uh, our R&D groups and uh, the overall uh, from SACPOD, I think we have been able to extremely accelerate that mission. Well, that's that's really exciting. So, uh, and I mean, uh, definitely, I mean, a lot to learn, uh, right? And uh, the best thing is uh, we have really amazing customers who lead us uh, on this path, uh, right? Uh, telling us uh, what, what they need and uh, how things must happen with all the technology available today. Uh, it's really, really um, uh, useful for customers to expose that gap for us as well. So I think we are approaching the the Q and A now. So we have the Q and A for those uh, those watching. Uh, if you have your uh, if you have not posted your questions until now, please uh, do post them in the uh, ask ask your question ask a question uh, window just below your bright talk uh, video. So I'll I'll read out these questions uh, from the audience, Chandra and Preeti, and uh, you can take up uh, respectively. The first question that we have. Uh, is will you send these slides out? Yes, we will. So we will send a recording. We will send the slide. And in fact, I mean, if you need a, any other help from the team, you can always reach out to us uh, through our website. Uh, when this module be available? Uh, yes, we're going to share the PPT. Uh, the module is already available now. Uh, so we, have, we are launching it uh, for uh, all of our customers publicly as we speak. So it's already available. Uh, so you can always go ahead and test it and also showcase. Uh, if you're a partner, you, you would also be able to showcase it to your customers. Uh, and uh, in fact, our partner teams uh, will uh, definitely reach out to you uh, to make sure, I mean, you have all the information with you. Uh, another question we have here, what are the data sources for Sena now? Does it ingest data from third-party EDR 
AV scanners, etc., or does it require its own endpoint client? So I think I'll open that question for you, uh, Preeti or Chandra, whoever wants to take it up. Yeah. So <clears throat> we talked about end-to-end -end vulnerability management. So, so we do have a, a pretty powerful vulnerability scanner that can uh, detect vulnerabilities across the IT infrastructure. So that is the primary data, but we also enrich that data with our own vulnerability intelligence that we have been building for several years. Uh, not only that, uh, we also gather hundreds and thousands of different system attributes from every computing device. And all of those are put into use here uh, to see if a particular vulnerability is exploitable or if there is some mitigation control already uh, in place that makes it uh, not so easy for attackers to exploit it, etc. So all of this is natively built, and there are a number of security controls that we check, including the EDRs, the AVs, and the ASLR, DEP, BitLocker. A lot of those checks are also natively performed with our own uh, uh, data points and the, the scanners that we have uh, deployed within the environment. Great, great. So the next question we have here is what actions does Remediate perform? Is this just for tracking or is there automation that takes actions on the devices? Does it perform recommendations uh, such as updates or apply missing patches or remediation notify the end user when they launch vulnerable software? Pretty, do you want to take that? Yeah, so we do have a patch management module uh, for our customers uh, where um, we try test in our labs and see if the patch is working well and we release it to our customers. So we have SLAs with a lot of customers, you know, uh, and it will not just track, uh, but also provide you with the patch for remediation. If you already have a Windows update server, it will integrate with it. So patch management in itself uh, is a very feature rich product. Uh, you can test, deploy, you know, there are a lot of things that you can do with patch management. Um, yeah, so probably um, you know, one of our um, salespersons can reach out to you to make you understand how patch management works. Okay, great. The next question we have is how to prioritize the risk in internal vulnerability scans? So our product does both uh, internal vulnerability scan as well as the external scanning, external exposure management sort of scanning. So those vulnerabilities that are discovered uh, goes through the same prioritization that we talked about uh, through the SSVC framework. And then all of these vulnerabilities are categorized into the four buckets that we talked about. So that is applicable to both internal vulnerability scan as well as external scans. Okay, great. Uh, then the next question we have from the audience is, does it also work for web vulnerabilities, application vulnerabilities? Yes, it does. Okay, great. Um, then the next question we have is, uh, how, for example, okay, does it work for application vulnerability? We covered that. Uh, as an example, cross-site scripting XXS. Uh, and uh, yeah, if, if that uh, is also covered. Yeah, so people can search uh, cross-site scripting. Um, they can get all the vulnerabilities which make use of uh, this vulnerability and patch it. Mm -hmm. Great. How can you get access to the nodes? Uh, yeah, so we'll share this with the... Uh, uh, all the registrants on email, uh, along with uh, the slides and uh, the recording of this session, right? And a lot more uh, information about the product. Uh, next question we have is how to prioritize the risk. Uh, I think we covered that as well. Internal vulnerability scan. So as Chandra said, uh, we do both internal as well as external. Uh, so we cover both there. Is the product standalone or does it require other parts of your product? Yeah, I think uh, if you stitch them together, the whole platform is helping vulnerability management end-to-end -to -end, uh, 
the whole cycle that we talked about. So each of these products are kind of standalone, I mean, self-contained by itself. But if you have our own vulnerability scanner and the, the detection logic that we talked about, obviously we'll be able to uh, natively discover all of those vulnerability and help prioritize all of those vulnerabilities. So it works when you have all of these uh, together, kind of tied together. And that is where I think the, the benefit can be really seen uh, when you have it together. Okay. Uh, the next question we have is, how does it differ? How does this risk prioritization uh, feature differ from existing vulnerability assessment, uh, well-known vulnerability assessment uh, uh, solutions out there? Yeah. Uh, Preeti, do you want to take that? Yeah. So um, when it comes to advanced vulnerability management as a framework, Right, uh, risk prioritization would take you through the SSVC categorization, which is where the stakeholder specific categorization that you'll get. It also stitches together the patch management. So that's where you know the entire cycle comes into picture. Uh, so it actually uh, makes a difference where we are not just telling you, you know, prioritize and these are the risks that you need to look at, but also providing you the solution. Yeah, I think most of the risk prioritization that uh, I generally see, look at uh, vulnerabilities and then apply the vulnerability intelligence or the malware intelligence and say this is the updated risk scoring and this is why uh, this is critical or this is priority that you must act upon. But uh, so how we differ, of course, we have our own vulnerability scanner, but uh, that apart, uh, that apart from the vulnerability and threat intelligence that we have, we also look at the the kill chain uh, logic validation. We also look at number of security controls that may already be there in the environment that would uh, deprioritize certain vulnerabilities that may not be necessary to act upon. And of course, uh, integrating, as Preeti said, uh, into the remediation engine. So you not only discover and prioritize, but you can actually click a button and fix them and uh, eliminate those vulnerabilities in as yours, uh, you can actually witness those vulnerability going down, right? So when you apply it, it immediately runs a scan, it tells you that these vulnerabilities are already remediated and the act count that you had, uh, let's say 700 acts, so you now have 659 uh, vulnerabilities that you must act upon. So all of these is kind of instantly, you'll be able to visualize and realize them. Okay. Great. And then, uh... Okay, the other question. So we have, in I think, in uh, with uh, keeping time in mind, we have two, two or three more questions. Uh, I'll, I'll go through through them quickly. What happens if the vulnerability is? No, I think before that we had another. How can we target uh, and prioritize vulnerabilities based on the exposed CIs through this view? Trying to think what is the CI, confidentiality and integrity, or is something else? Okay. So let's assume confidentiality and integrity. Uh -huh. I think we do cover those uh, attributes in, in the evaluation logic. Okay. <laughs> what happens if the vulnerability is not published uh, in a CVE? For example, if, a, if it is a web application that has just been released, it was homemade. Uh, for example, will that be covered? Custom applications, we don't do that right now. Uh, we are not doing okay. a white box analysis to find uh, vulnerabilities in custom applications. Okay. Can this product ingest data from Microsoft Defender, Tenable Nessus, or any other uh, scanners? Mm -hmm. Theoretically, yeah. It can, uh, but there are those checks that we do, right? Um, so those would be uh, the missing factors that uh, if they can ingest that as well, um, which would be rather a, an enormous effort, right? To identify those 70 plus checks and also ingest into. So um, with our product, VM, uh, you know, vulnerability management, compliance management, you know, all stitching in is much easier uh, to 
um, use. So, uh, though we can, but it will not give you the right prioritization if you don't run those extra mitigation checks um, that we write, um, you know, into the devices and try to find out. No, I think that is good. Okay. Yeah, I think another extension of this question would be can you replace those scanners with Sena now? Yes, you can. Right. So you you won't need those scanners if, if you already have the suit, uh Sena now suit. Uh, I think for the final question we have uh, for both of you, I think I have extended it long and uh, my apologies. Uh, how does business context information like asset criticality can be configured in Sena now? That's the last question uh, we have. Critic. Um, can you repeat that question, Jaxi? Asset criticality. Uh, how, yeah, how business context information such as asset criticality can be configured uh, in Sena now? So uh, we have a configuration and risk prioritization uh, where you can mark all those assets um, you know, that are critical uh, for your organization, whether they are software assets or devices. Um, and we will be able to um, you know, give them a higher prioritization and would uh, ask you to act upon those first. Yeah. OK. Great. Uh, thanks, uh, Chandra. Thanks, Preeti. I think uh, that was an amazing uh, q and I mean, a lot of questions. And if, of course, if, uh, if uh, anybody from the audience has more questions, you can always reach out to us directly. And uh, we love one-on-one -on -one conversations. That's for sure. So uh, and again, once again, uh, Chandra, Preeti, thanks for your time uh, uh, for such an amazing, uh, it was such an amazing show. And I think uh, on behalf of the audience, uh, I can wish myself and uh, you as well uh, best of luck with this product. Thank you so Thank much. Wonderful. Have a good as rest a closing, of the uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Good, Jixi. Yeah. So as, as a closing statement, yes, so we do have the product uh, available now on our website, secbot.com. You can always uh, go ahead to secbot.com or senanar.com, either of those, and uh, start your own trial today. Uh, but when you do, uh, please do not forget uh, to give feedback to us. We really love feedback. It helps us uh, keep coming up with more and more product updates. And... Uh, uh, I, I definitely look forward to doing all of these sessions. Um, so as a wrap, uh, Sena now once again, as a wrap, Sena now cyber hygiene platform is an advanced vulnerability management solution. IT security teams today use it to discover vulnerabilities, implement patches, uh, comply with regulatory standards, get asset exposure, implement the security controls, a lot more. And now it also does this prioritization so you can save your efforts and invest them where they are needed, uh, right? And uh, we will send a recorded version of this uh, of this uh, session to your email. It's also going to be available on our website and YouTube channel, as well as on our Bright Talk channel. So uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, please tune to SecPod webcasts. We'll see you in the next session. Thanks for your valuable time. Have a happy time ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.